of this video, you will be able to balance a chemical equation given the reactants and the products formed. Vocabulary. Coefficients. Coefficients are the whole numbers written in front of the reactants and the products. In the example 3Na, 3 would be our coefficient. Subscript. A subscript is the whole number written after an element or compound. It can be found in the lower right-hand corner of that element or compound. So, for example, using the diatomic molecule oxygen, or O2, 2 would be our subscript. Law of Conservation of Mass The Law of Conservation of Mass states that the mass of the reactants will always equal the mass of the products. Using our example on the right, we have 32 grams of sulfur reacting with 56 grams of iron to yield 88 grams of iron 2 sulfide. Notice, as we react 32 grams plus 56 grams, we yield a total of 88 grams as our product. We never gained or lost atoms. In summary, what you put into the reaction is what you will get out of the reaction. Did you know? Antoine Lavoisier, the man who founded the law of conservation of mass, died in 1794. For you history buffs, can you tell me what was going on in France during the 1790s? Well, of course, the French Revolution. The Voisier had the misfortune of being a tax collector during his day job. One day, in 1794, the people revolted, and they beheaded anyone who was in control of their money. Well, the Voisier, being a tax collector, was one of those. Steps to Balancing Equations Remember, atoms on each side of the arrow have to balance. Step 1. Determine the number of atoms on each side. Step 2. To balance it, you need to add coefficients, not subscripts. 3. To recalculate, just add more coefficients on each side of the equation uh, as needed. Steps to balancing equations continued. Remember, atoms on each side of the arrow have to balance. I recommend starting with elements that are combined in compounds and leave freestanding elements to last. If you have an odd number of atoms on one side, you will almost certainly have to add coefficients of two to make it even. Calcium plus oxygen yielding calcium oxide. Step 1. Determine the number of atoms on each side. So let's sum it up. On the reactant side, we have 1 calcium, 2 oxygen. On the product side, we have 1 calcium, 1 oxygen. Example 1. Step 2. In the previous equation, we had calcium plus oxygen yielding calcium oxide. Step 2. We have two oxygen atoms on the reactant side. Then, we need two oxygen atoms on the product side. Place a coefficient of 2 on the product side. So now we can sum this up. On the reactant side, we have one calcium atom, two oxygen atoms. On the product side, we now have two calcium atoms and two oxygen atoms. Example one, step three. As we did in the previous
this side, we added a two coefficient on the product side. So on step three, since the oxygen atoms are balanced, we just need to balance the calcium atoms. Place a two in the coefficient spot on the reactant side. Now, as we sum this up, on the reactant side, we have two calcium atoms, two oxygen atoms, and on the product side, we have two calcium atoms, two oxygen atoms. Balanced! Example two, step one. Here in this equation, we have aluminum plus oxygen yielding aluminum three oxide. Step one, determine the number of atoms on each side. Now let's sum this up. On the reactant side, we have one aluminum atom, two oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms. Example two, step two. In our previous equation, we had aluminum plus oxygen yielding aluminum three oxide. Step two, we have an odd number of oxygen atoms on the product side. To make it even, we need to place a two as a coefficient on the product side. After we did that, let's sum it up. On the reactant side, we have one aluminum atom, two oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have now four aluminum atoms and six oxygen atoms. Example two, step three. In the previous step, we added a two coefficient on the product side. So in step three, we have six oxygen atoms on the product side. Now, place a three coefficient in front of the O2 on the reactant side. So to sum this up now, on the reactant side we have one aluminum atom, six oxygen atoms. On the product side we have four aluminum atoms and six oxygen atoms. Example two, step four. In the previous step, we added a three coefficient in front of the O2 on the reactant side. In step four, the last remaining step is to have the aluminum atoms balance on each side of the equation. Place a four as the coefficient in front of the aluminum on the reactant side. And then when we sum this up, we have four aluminum atoms on the reactant side and six oxygen atoms. On the product side now, we will have four aluminum atoms and six oxygen atoms. And now, we are balanced. Example three, step one. Here in this equation, we have iron two chloride plus sodium phosphate yielding sodium chloride and iron two phosphate. Step one, determine the number of atoms on each side. So, on the reactant side, we have one iron atom, two chlorine atoms, three sodium atoms, one phosphorus atom, and four oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have three iron atoms, one chlorine atom, one sodium atom, two phosphorus atom, and eight oxygen atoms. Some of you might be wondering why on the product side we have two phosphorus atoms and eight oxygen atoms. Think back to your algebra days. That two outside the parentheses will be distributed through. So it's ha like having one phosphorus atom times two, two, and four oxygen atoms times two, eight. Example three, step two. Looking at this equation, let's move on to the second step. Since there are eight oxygen atoms on the product side, we need to place a coefficient of two on the reactant side. To sum this up, on the reactant side, we have one iron atom, two chlorine atoms, and 
and now we have six sodium atoms, and now we have two phosphorus atoms, and now we have eight oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have three iron atoms, one chlorine atom, one sodium atom, two phosphorus atoms, and eight oxygen atoms. Example three, step three. After placing a coefficient of two on the reactant side, let's move on to the third step. There are three iron atoms on the product side, so let's place a coefficient of three on the reactant side. Notice now, there are six chlorine atoms on the reactant side. So, let's sum this up. We now, on the reactant side, have three iron atoms. We now have six chlorine atoms, six sodium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, eight oxygen atoms. On the product side, we have three iron atoms, one chlorine atom, one sodium atom, two phosphorus atoms, and eight oxygen atoms. Example three, step four. After just placing a coefficient of three on the reactant side, let's move on to the fourth step. To match the reactants, we need to have six sodium atoms and six chlorine atoms on the product side. In order to do that, we need to place a coefficient of six in front of the NaCl on the product side. To sum this up, on the reactant side, we now have three iron atoms, six chlorine atoms, six sodium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, eight oxygen atoms. And on the product side, we have three iron atoms. We now have six chlorine atoms, six sodium atoms, two phosphorus atoms, and eight oxygen atoms. Balanced! Student practice problems. Balance the following problems. Make sure they are completed and brought to the next class.